Welcome to Getting Started with Alexa, part two. In this episode, we're going to focus on building our very first skill. And as we mentioned in the last episode, we're going to focus on the front end. So the best place to do that is at developer.amazon.com. Make sure you log in and get into your developer console, and you'll see a screen that looks just like this. Now, once we're here, you probably won't have a list as long as mine of skills that you've built, but you all have this blue button that says Create Skill. So let's start there. The first screen is going to ask us what we want to name our skill. And in this case, we're building a skill that focuses on making it easy to shop for a car. You ask about a car model and make, and it can tell you how much that car costs. So in this case, I'm going to call my skill Car Shopper. Uh, we also need to choose a primary locale. You can see here that English US is selected by default for me, but there's a whole list of languages and locales that you can start with. You can always add these later. Just focus on the language you're the most comfortable with to start. As we hit the next button, it's also going to ask us what kind of experience we're going to build. So for our case, you can see there's a lot of different categories here, but a car shopping skill doesn't really fit into any of these specific categories, so I'm going to choose other. All this choice does is narrows down the number of models that it's going to recommend to me, which is step two. So as you see here, we have custom, we have flash briefing, and a few others. All of these models outside of custom are predefined models defined for specific use cases. So in the example of music, this would give you an instant model that had play and pause and rewind and next and skip and those kinds of things. The same goes for video or smart home, right? Smart home skills need to be able to control a thermostat or a light bulb. They have predefined models over what kinds of words they can accept and what those things should do. But for us, we're doing something that's a little more custom. And so for that, we're gonna choose the custom model. We'll talk more about what that means and how we build it here in just a second. The other option we have down here at the bottom is about how we're going to host our code. Do we want to use Alexa hosted or do we want to build our own someplace else? Within the two Alexa hosted choices, you can see JavaScript and Python. This is a way for you to set up all of the resources that you need, but they're hosted by Alexa. This means you don't have to set up an AWS account or worry about credit cards or anything like that. In this case, you have a serverless function, you have a database, and you have file storage that you can use to support anything that you build into your skill. On the provision your own side, you can put this anywhere you'd like. If you want to put this on AWS or on any other server you may have, you can write in any language and any technology you'd like as long as you support the bare minimum standards for building an Alexa skill. Let's move on to the next step. On the next screen, you can see a set of skill templates. We have start from scratch, which is what we'll use here in just a moment but we also have a list of other skill templates you can use for your own. And if you don't have something that matches one of these exactly, I still think they're incredible learning resources to set up and take apart and really understand the inner workings of a more advanced example. But for our example, we're gonna start from scratch and we're gonna build our very own skill. So this last screen shows us just a review of all the choices that we've made. So let's create our skill. The first stop is to jump into this Invocations tab and choose Skill Invocation Name. We want to make sure that we change our Skill Invocation Name to be the words that we want our users to use when they want to communicate with our skill. So in this case, we're building a car shopping skill. We're going to call our skill Car Shopper. There are a couple of rules when it comes to creating invocation names. The first is, if you don't own a trademark or a copyright on a very specific word, every skill you create will have to have at least two words in its invocation name. On top of that, if you are thinking about building a skill that has abbreviations, something like ABC, you'll want to make sure that you use a space and a period after each letter so that it understands that that's an abbreviation, uh, something we call an initialism. So we talked about intents earlier. Let's get into that next. Uh, we're going to save and build our model to make sure that our new invocation name is in place and then move over to our interaction model where you can see that we actually have six intents waiting for us already. The first one is the Amazon cancel intent. You'll also see the third one is the stop intent. In many cases, these do the exact same thing. They're meant to allow the user to stop whatever's happening. But it's important to remember that you should use them the way the user expects them to work. And so cancel and stop often are used to exit your skill, but you can use them in the ways that make sense for your software. The help intent, number two, is defined to be a thing that a user can use to say help or I don't know what to do. The help intent will then respond to the user with the kinds of information they would need to make an informed decision about their next step inside your skill. So the help intent exclusively should be providing help to your users. The navigate home intent, if you're building a skill that has visuals, like using our technology called APL, 
This is a way for the user to go back to whatever your home screen is inside your skill. If you don't use APL, if you don't have visuals, this won't be very important to you. The last one, fallback intent, can become incredibly important though. As users use your software, they will forget sometimes that they are inside your skill. The fallback intent should be a signal to you that you're missing something. Either the user is trying to give a command that you're not supposed to handle, or they're saying something that should match your stuff, but maybe you haven't come up with a good way to do that. There are analytics you can look at to see how some of these things are funneling out and why your fallback intent is being hit. The last one here, the hello world intent. This is a custom intent to be able to use as our first intent as we're building. And so let's open it up. You can see that inside my hello world intent, I actually have seven sample utterances. All seven of these here basically encourage the skill to say hello. That's not what we want to do in our skill. So what I'm going to do is remove all of these utterances. And instead, I'm going to call it the car intent. This is the interface that I'm going to use with my users so that when they ask me about a car, I'm going to capture their responses here. So what are the kinds of things that a user might say in order to capture this information? They might say something like Honda Civic or Jeep Wrangler. But as you can imagine, creating all of these sample utterances would be tedious and hard to manage and maintain. So what I always recommend when you have lists of things that you expect your user to say, Think about using something we call slots. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create some new slot types. The first one we'll call manufacturer. In this slot type, we're going to have all of the different kinds of manufacturers we expect to see. Now you could see things like Ford or Jeep or Honda in this list. And that's a good, easy way to start. But I actually have a long list of manufacturers that I want to use. And so we have a really nice bulk edit tool that allows me to add all of these very quickly. So I'm going to take my much longer list of manufacturers and dump them here. So I'm going to hit submit and you'll see how it fills in this screen for me. But you'll also notice that Chevrolet and Volkswagen have some extra data out to the right here. Those are synonyms for things like Chevrolet or Volkswagen. We can add many synonyms to every one of our values. So as you think about the ways people might say things, it's important to add those synonyms as much as you possibly can. Okay, so that's our first slot called Manufacturer. I'm going to save that and we're going to add one more. So I'm going to come back in here and call this um, Model. And in the model, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to bring a long list of models into our slot. Okay, I've added my list of models to my slot. And you can see that I now have a nice long list of models. But also we have a few synonyms, right, for words like RAV4 or Forerunner. Uh, each of these has unique values that we want to make sure that we're capturing appropriately. You can also see that this list is much longer. There's actually 56 different values in my slot now. So we have our two slots created. Now let's think about how we actually build our intent to use and take advantage of these slots. You saw earlier that I wrote Jeep Wrangler and Honda Civic. I'm going to get rid of these and instead we're going to do something like this. Manufacturer. Uh, and you notice that instantly by wrapping it in curly braces, it recognizes that there's a new slot to be created. I am going to say that this slot is of type manufacturer. It's very convenient to use the same names. It's not required. So I have manufacturer as one example. I might also just have them say model, right? What if they say, uh, tell me about a Wrangler? Well, we can handle just a model. Each one of these lines represents a unique utterance a user might say. But they might also say manufacturer. Uh, and the model, like so. And so we're able to capture those as well. All of these will be captured by our intent and make it easy for us to understand what exactly they're, they're looking for. So my next step is to save and build this model. We're building something that sits on top of machine learning. And so as a user speaks, it's possible that the machine learning engine can infer what the user's saying, even though it's not actually directly in our list. All right, now that our model has been built, we want to make sure that it's working the way we expect it to. Well, there's this fantastic tool up here in the right-hand corner called Evaluate Model. If I open this up, the utterance profiler is selected by default, and I can type something in. So let's try Jeep Wrangler. And if I hit Enter on that, what we get to see is what my model will do when someone says Jeep Wrangler. In this case, you can see that it's telling me I'm going to hit the car intent, 
And the two slot values that are going to be passed through to my code are Wrangler and Jeep. We could also try silly things like tacos. And so we'll have some code on the back end to handle those weird cases that don't really match anything either. So as we jump back to our intent, it's important to remember when we were choosing a pre-built template earlier, we had options like music or video or smart home. If we have a pre-built model, all of this would already be predefined for us for things like play and pause and rewind. And all we would have to do is rig up those events to the things that we want to happen behind the scenes. I also want you to make sure that as you're thinking about building conversations with users, that you think specifically about what a conversation looks like. So what I'd like to recommend is that you check out our Alexa design guide. And I think this provides you with a whole litany of help about how do we design for voice? Why do we think about conversation design? And what are the principles that we can use to make sure this is really effective for all of our users? Everything we've done so far is really just a JSON file. You can see I have all of my slot values there. Up here at the top, we have all of our intents, including this car intent. And this leads me to my other point. For some of you, certainly the more advanced developers that are watching this, you're going to want to use the tools that you use all the time, something like VS Code or any other code editor. And I have exciting news for you. If I jump over here to VS Code, I want to show you that, in fact, not only can I do all of my editing from here, but we also have a CLI, a command line interface, that allows us to easily interact with Alexa directly. So I can say something like ask new, ASK, the Alexa skills kit, is this CLI command that we use to communicate with this. And by saying ask new, what I get to do is start the same process we had earlier. Am I building a skill in Node or Python or Java? I'm going to say Node. Then you remember earlier we talked about Alexa hosted skills versus something that I provision my own. So in this case, I can say Alexa hosted skills and it asks me what region and we can continue down this process and create the entire skill and all of its files here locally on my machine, which means I can do local development, which means I can deploy these things to the cloud whenever I need. And we can even set up local debugging so that we can set things like breakpoints as we're running our code and doing all of our testing. Okay, so as we run back, to our developer console and see everything that's available to us. There's one other thing that I wanted to share with you. Inside our interfaces tool, we have something called Alexa conversations down here at the bottom. The idea here is an opportunity to delegate a lot of the conversations that you're having with your user to Alexa themselves. Rather than defining all of our intents and how the model is going to be structured, you can use Alexa conversations to use machine learning to make a lot of those decisions for you. In our next video, part three, we're going to cover the backend systems that go into building an Alexa skill, what Alexa says, how the conversation continues, and all of that. But don't rush ahead. If you're thinking about building a skill now, get started. You can build the entire front end before you ever worry about a single thing that happens on the backend system. I want to thank you for tuning in, and I can't wait to see what you're going to build. Hey!